Let's start here. Everybody can uh, hear me okay in there? Give me some of a thumbs up. Good, good, good. So my name is uh, Dan Thedens. I am a research scientist here at the university, and I am sitting here inside our MRI scanner room. So uh, this was a little tricky because uh, I got to be on my knees down here. I had to find a special pad for that so I'm not uh, wrecking my knees. But I wanted to show you a few things in the room here that if you were able to come to campus, you'd be able to see. So what you're looking at behind me there is in fact our MRI scanner. So I don't know, has anybody had or know somebody that's had an MRI scan before? Has had to go into one of these things? Uh, we've seen, uh, if you have, you'll know that, I'm gonna try this, my, my, my uh, video glitched a little bit because I walked maybe a little too close to the scanner when I did this before. But if you were getting scanned, you would basically have to go down the center of that big tube down there. So that tube is maybe, oh, three or four feet long. So if we were gonna scan your head, you'd be right down the middle of it. If we were gonna scan your foot, basically whatever we scan on you is going to be right in the middle. So if we did your foot, we'd go in feet first and your head would probably be out, you could see okay. If we did your knee, you'd probably be right up about the edge. If we did your head, of course, you'd be all the way down there. This other thing sitting on the table there is our coil. So essentially, if we were gonna scan your head, you would need to stick your head inside that. The top comes off of that, the lid comes up, so we'd be able to just pop that off and you'd slide in there. And it's really not as bad as it looks. You know, maybe the first time you think, oh geez, I'm going like into a big water pipe or something like that, but it's really not too bad. I actually, because I've been doing research and work in this area for probably, oh, 20 some years, uh, I probably had 200 of these scans over that time. So that hopefully tells you a couple things that, it's very safe. You can have as many of these as you want. The only things that are involved with this is magnets and radio waves. I won't be able to demonstrate the radio waves today, but I will be able to demonstrate the magnet part of it. Uh, the other is, you know, it doesn't cause hair loss, however. I will point that out. So there's no risk of you. Uh, that's, a, that's a whole unrelated thing for me. So uh, you can go in there without any worries about that. But as I say, very safe. It's just a big magnet. But we do have to take a few precautions around it, having a big magnet. So essentially, anytime we're around a big magnet, this is the same type of magnet in some sense, it's like on your refrigerator, holding up those pictures you drew in kindergarten, but it's like a thousand times stronger. So I'm gonna show a couple of things related to that. I actually have here, this is a belt that I wear around here. You can see just an ordinary belt. It does have the typical loop here and this little tongue on it. Well, it turns out, I found this out just sort of accidentally one time, that the tongue on this belt is just a little bit magnetic. It's attracted to a magnet. No other part of this belt is, but the tongue of this is attracted to a magnet. So I'm gonna stand up here for a second and just show you what happens even if we get this tongue a little bit too close to the magnet. And hopefully you can see here what's happening. It's basically levitating. If I would let this go, it would go kind of flying right in there. And so this is a completely invisible force that's involved in here. All we're seeing is just that attractive force just through the air that's exerted off from the magnet, the big magnet down here, to just this little tongue of my belt. That's all it takes. So you can imagine if we have anything bigger than this in here, uh, it could really go flying. If you look around, there is, uh, there's videos of people that have accidentally uh, taken things like staplers and uh, power tools. And there's one that demonstrates even with like an oxygen tank, which is something that we, we don't really worry too much about here in research. But if you were in the hospital getting a scan in there, you know, somebody might come down. You have to make sure that all of that stuff is out of your pocket. So every time I'm walking around here, I'm constantly, you know, tapping all of my pockets to make sure I'm not carrying my keys and things like that. Your wallet and stuff like that, uh, it wouldn't go flying in there, but it would probably wipe out your ATM cards, your phone, it might make it malfunction, things like that. So uh, it's best to have everything emptied out if you come around in here. The other thing I'll show up here quick uh, is something that happens even if it's not magnetic. So I have a couple of other items here. I've got these just two big uh, uh, aluminum blocks. So these are just plain metal, they're not attracted to the magnet, so you're not gonna be able to you know, have the fun of seeing me destroy our scanner by putting giant metal blocks in it. These are just aluminum, but they're ordinary plain metal. So they're not gonna be attracted to the magnet, but it turns out that when you put 
big hunks of metal near a magnet, they behave kind of funny. And so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna walk up there and I'm gonna just try and push this in the center of the magnet, just push it down there. You can see this isn't hard for me to do over here. That's not that heavy. I can even do it one-handed. But if I go up there, you're gonna see it's gonna behave a little bit differently. So I might've been kind of in the way of that here while I was doing that, but what you see is it's not easy to work with. You basically are, you know, it doesn't, it almost floats in here because of the way that it interacts. You can see my headphones doing the same thing there, by the way, that wasn't an intentional demonstration, but there it is. And you can just kind of watch that in the background. I have these kind of balanced up here, but they should be falling over. But you can see again, because of the way the magnet works with that metal, everything just gets super slowed down. There they kind of go falling and the balance in there, but everything is just kind of happening in super slow motion. And that's again, because of the way that magnetic fields and pieces of metal interact with one another, it sort of tries to suppress any of that motion really takes a lot more force to go in there. And so, you know, typically you don't notice this when you're going in. The one time I notice it just a little bit is I have a wedding ring that I wear, and this is just regular metal. But when I go in the scanner, sometimes if I try and turn my hand really quick, like I was waving at someone, it doesn't want to move. And so it kind of digs into my hand a little bit. You can kind of tell those things when you uh, are around big magnets all the time. But otherwise, as I say, it's completely safe. Uh, we can do people over and over. Typically we would have, say if we're doing a research scan, we'd scan your brain or whatever. And because of the fact that there's no harmful effects, there's no radiation, we don't have to inject you with anything, we can bring you back and we can scan you again later on and kind of see how things are changing. So for young people, you know, we can see a little bit about how you're growing. For older people, we can kind of see, well, how are they aging and what's happening? And that's why the MRI is, is a really good tool for that. If you were getting a scan too, in addition to laying in there, again, you'd have to lay in that coil up here, but we would also give you headphones. So while you're in there, you can listen to music and you may not have seen it, but in the uh, back of the, the opening of the magnet, there's actually a video screen back there. And so we can project onto that video screen, a movie. So a lot of times we'll just let somebody lay in there and watch a movie. There's a mirror up on the uh, top of that coil. And so you look up, you have your head back, but the mirror points to the back and you can watch something on the screen and just do whatever you want in there. The main thing is you just need to lie very still so that you can uh, get good pictures. These pictures do take time. It takes on the order of 15 to 30 minutes probably to do a full scan. Some scans can go as long as an hour. And the main thing is just to lay very still. One other little thing, by the way, is not all scanners around here have this uh, fancy decoration on it. We actually uh, had this done probably Oh, six months ago, we had the scanner wrapped in extra decorations just to make it kind of look sort of fun. We have a sort of spaceship theme going on here. Uh, most of these would be a little more drab and plain, but ours uh, got jazzed up by uh, a local business that normally does this for cars. And so it looks pretty cool in there overall. So I do have, since this is kind of a school thing, uh, I got a little quiz for you next. So one of the things we do is, as I say, a lot of times we're testing things. We're not necessarily you know, scanning somebody to find out if they have uh, something in their brain or not in their brain, but we just are trying out new ideas. And so we need something to test it on. I get tested on a lot. As I say, I've had about 200 of these scans. For me, I just immediately start to fall asleep as soon as I'm laying in there, which is good. I get to fall asleep, but I'm still working. So this is, a good, uh, this is a good job description to have, that taking a nap is actually part of your job description from time to time. But sometimes we need to just test other things out just to see if it'll work. We don't necessarily have to have a person in there. And so I'm gonna screen share. These are a few things that we have scanned in our scanner. These are all, well, maybe not absolutely all, all kind of fruits and vegetable things, edible things uh, that we've just put in the scanner. I'll give you a little hint before I start to show this. 
that for the things I'm showing, the type of images that you're going to see, in general, if it has more water or more juice in it, it's going to be brighter on the picture, more white. If it is denser or less juice in it, less water in it, it's going to be a little bit darker on the picture. So go ahead and make your guesses in the chat if you want to here. I'm going to pop this up and share. I got about 10 things here that we can show. Let's see, get the right window up here. Okay, so you should be seeing a funky little, a uh, couple of little circles and a little white and gray kind of things up in there. Let me see, I'll put my chat up here. If anybody wants to guess what these things are. The first one here, yep, I think we've got a good guess here at the start. These are eggs. As you can see on these, the yolk of the egg in the center is a little darker than the white. I got a follow-up question on this one. Do you think this is a raw egg or a hard boiled egg? So again, there'd be a little different. A raw egg is, is you know, a little more liquidy. A hard boiled egg is a little more solid. Well, it actually is a raw egg. These are all raw eggs. So how they look from, you know, to you when you open it up and how it looks inside the magnet is not necessarily gonna be the same. A raw egg, because it's more liquidy, uh, turns out to show up better than a hard boiled egg. I'm always meaning maybe this Easter after we decorate a few eggs, I'll scan them after that to, to verify my assumption that the uh, hard boiled egg wouldn't show up as well. Okay, how about this one? This one's not too hard. Uh, it's again, something I'm sure if you hung around uh, your parents kitchen at all, you've seen them slicing these up. It is an onion. It has layers just like an ogre from Shrek does. So you can see the top left is sort of sliced crosswise slice down on the top right and the bottom is kind of a, a 3D thing going on there. This one too, I think most everybody probably has experience with. There's about three different answers, three different things that almost look identical on the scan uh, when you're looking at these. This is, uh, this is an orange. Uh, if you did a clementine, it would look exactly the same. If you did a grapefruit, it would look pretty much the same. One thing you can do, and we'd be happy to do this for you, if you wanna come in and uh, have your fruit scanned to verify, you know, I really don't like seeds in my oranges. Uh, we could go ahead and scan it. We don't have to peel it or anything. We just stuck it in there the regular way. So if you wanna find out if your seedless oranges or clementines really are seedless, uh, for about $300, we'd be happy to do that for you. So uh, email us, you know, they can get me email from somebody if you really want that done for you. You can claim to, you know, tell Hy-Vee that they didn't do their job on that. How about this one? This one's a little more exotic. Again, I think it's pretty commonly available these days in stores, but it uh, doesn't really come from around here. And yep, I'm seeing a few answers there. This is a kiwi. Same kind of thing. What you're seeing are the juicy parts of the kiwi are bright. The seedy parts, the dense parts are kind of dark on this. So uh, you get a nice view of this. As I said, the, the one on the right always looks, if I didn't show you the one on the left, uh, it would look like a dill pickle or something like that, if you like that sort of thing. This one's a little trickier, a little more exotic yet. What do you think? Uh, spelling doesn't count on this. So if you can uh, make it look like you think it is. It's usually, as I say, I think I see it in stores around Christmas time. Uh, you, see, you can get juice of this bottled in kind of a funny shaped bottle. Uh, so again, exotic here. I'll give you a 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yep, there we go. I, I thought somebody was probably typing it there, needed a little assistance on that. Pomegranate pomegranate. So that's a really juicy, really seedy thing in there. You can see that whole pattern in there. How about this one? This one is a little trickier because uh, it's hard to say what size it is. Uh, I've, I've had guesses that, have, you know, guess things that are really small, guess things that are really big. Uh, I'll give you the hint that it's about, that's about as big as my head. So if you can see my head on here, uh, almost, I see watermelon, which is extremely close. It's another, yep, it's another type of melon. It's it's a cantaloupe or a muscatine melon if you're from muscatine. And so you can see kind of the fibrous stuff there, the seedy parts in the center. This is actually a very good uh, thing to use if you are, you know, testing it for brain scans, because it is, it's about the size of someone's head. And so it makes just a good uh, test run in there that we could utilize for some things. How about this one? This one too, pretty common. You may have only eaten it, uh, had it from a can. Uh, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to slice sometimes. It's, it's got a lot, we cut the, uh, actually we did, I think we did it with the leaves on this. Uh, yep, I see it on there, it is a pineapple. So again, if you've only ever had pineapple canned, you remember it as chunks or as maybe the little rings, but you don't always get to see that really tough fiber core down the center of it, like you see in that bottom middle. So 
a pineapple. I think I have it upside down here, actually, because it looks like the leaves are on the bottom in this case here. This one, uh, this one's a little tricky, more than you'd guess. There's actually two answers that most people give. Uh, and it turns out that the one that is guessed most commonly is, is not the right one. The second most common one is, is the right one. So I'm seeing celery, broccoli, asparagus. Well, I'll say celery is a common guess. Broccoli is a common guess. And it turns out it is broccoli. It, it is broccoli. Now, I think part of the reason that people don't get this right away is that on, on broccoli, for the most part, what you would normally see if you had it in your hands is you'd see little flowery bits at the ends here. And that just doesn't really show up on the MRI scan. The flowery bits are kind of the, the end terminal and so don't have much uh, juice or liquid in them. Uh, mostly what you see is the stalk down here and where, the, where it's, it's being able to get the liquid to the ends there. The other uh, kind of funky thing about this is you see all these little white dots that are sort of spread around here. Uh, we actually had this wrapped up in like saran wrap. I had it in the refrigerator. And so there was little dots of, of condensation, little water droplets. The saran wrap, the plastic wrap doesn't show up at all in the scanner, but the water droplets do. They're very liquid. And so you're just kind of seeing them hanging out in midair there, but they were actually attached to, uh, attached to the saran wrap that this was wrapped in. This one's not too bad. Uh, it's again, something commonly eaten. Usually you probably have it in a sauce. Uh, I, I, I don't really like eating them raw, but, uh, but they're in all sorts of things that uh, people eat every day. Tomato, yep. So again, the juicy parts is a little brighter. The pulpier parts here are a little darker, but same thing. This is just a whole tomato put in the scanner and we scan it and it gives us pictures of, of slices of it. The last one I'll show you, this is sort of our challenge problem here. Now, this is something that uh, probably does not really qualify as being edible. Uh, it is something that we just had here in the lab and we decided, oh, what the heck, we'll, we'll try scanning it. But you'd probably be pretty desperate if you were uh, gonna eat it. I see mushrooms in there, it's not mushrooms. This is actually one item. So one thing and what you're looking at is basically, it's like we sliced it open a bunch of times down the long way of it. Uh, as I say, you could theoretically eat this, uh, you might encounter it if you were desperate and, you know, crawling through the desert or something like that. So you might think about dealing with it in that situation. And so I think I see somebody typing out there. You can probably get it. Yep. It is a cactus. So when somebody suggested scanning this, I thought, you know, nothing's going to show up. This is going to be useless because a cactus, it's a desert thing. It's dry. We know that this type of picture is best if you have something juicy. Uh, but if you think about how a cactus has to survive, uh, it's going to have to hold on to as much water as it can. So what you're really looking at, these little rings and that in there are where this cactus is holding on to that water. And we can see that in the MRI. So we'll get a look. We can also see some of the spiky bits in here. Uh, this cactus lived with us. We're not really, uh, we don't get a lot of sunlight here, even though it's a little bright in the background, not really the ideal place to grow a cactus. So our scanner uh, has a lot longer life than our cactus did. but. Maybe someday we'll get another one of those. Okay, I'm gonna stop that share in here. So that's sort of the fun things that we scan from time to time. But most of the time we're interested in scanning people. We do a lot of research in here uh, looking at people's brains. That's probably the number one thing that we do. If you were to come here, uh, in fact, you should look up. Uh, if you look online or uh, sometimes if, if any of your parents work for the university, they get emails all the time about research projects. And ones that involve MRIs typically are going to be brain studies. Not absolutely all of them. We have some that are looking at muscles, sometimes looking at knees and ankles and things like that. But most of them are brain scans. And so what I'm gonna show here, again, to make sure we're not violating anybody else's privacy, most of the pictures you're gonna see here are gonna be of my brain. So right now, this is not my brain yet. This is just a blank picture. Don't be thinking that, oh, it's my brain and my head is empty here. But what we're gonna look at is gonna be sort of a side view. This is gonna be a profile view. It's gonna start over on one side of my head and it's gonna be like you cut my head open, not to be uh, gruesome about that. But if we look through here, it's gonna come across here. Hopefully my uh, window is gonna scroll here. And my mouse is gonna work. Let's see if I can get this to go here. Where's my, here we go. And let's see if I, there we go. So you can see here, there's my, just the edge of my ear coming in there. 
And now you can see breaking through my skull and there finally my brain is popping into view. So again, this is just looking, slicing me from left to right here. You can see these little bright spots down there. That's my blood vessels coming through, uh, looking through there, going further, that big black spot on the, in the front there, that's my eyeball opening up there. So on this particular type of scans, uh, fluid things like eyeballs are actually dark on this one. I'll show another one of these where they will show up bright in some cases, but on this particular one, it's dark. If I keep going here, I'll get to the middle here. This is kind of a profile view of me. So this is exactly like right down the center. You can see my hairline on this is about the same as it is in real life. So the MRI is a good accurate depiction of that. Uh, and then if we keep going, we're just going back to the other side on this. So all the way over. Again, you can see at the bottom there, those bright lines are my carotid arteries coming through there. And so all of these are seeing where we got to go from there. So this is a typical brain scan. But as I say, MRI is pretty versatile. We can actually make the brain look different ways. So here's a different view of my brain. This one now is slicing me top to bottom. So you can see here's right the very tip top of my head. And then we're going to be moving down. And so as we go down farther, this one is another one that we have my brain where the fluid and things in there are bright. So these are what's called the, the bright things in the center or what's called the ventricles that holds that cerebrospinal fluid. If we go farther down, this is uh, probably the more gruesome looking thing. That's my eyeball. So it's like a cut right through the middle of my head here. My eyeballs, again, the corneas there are, are, are not filled with fluid. So they're dark. My eyeballs though are filled and they're bright and then going on down here. Uh, and so just all the way down into my nose and my spinal cord. So these are pretty typical pictures that we get of, of people in here. Just a couple other types of pictures that we get in here. Let's see if I can move that out of the way. Here's one that is also my brain, but now this is one that's just looking at my blood vessels. So there's nothing injected in my body here. This is all just done by programming the scanner in different ways. And these are just highlighting all of the blood vessels in my brain. And I can make them brighter or darker on these as I need to and spin this around to get a view. And the idea is, you know, we could look for any problems that if I had like a, a blocked artery or something like that, it would show up on this type of image. Uh, like I say, we do more than just brains in here. Uh, let's see, here's one. Actually, I'm going to save that one for the end. Here's one that is ankles. So here's one of, uh, I don't, this one is not my ankle, but the same kind of idea. This is actually somebody that had been injured in a car accident, I think it was. And so you can see some of the damage in their ankle, probably easiest to see on this one on the right. The bone in that is bright on this one, but you can see right at their ankle joint things there, there's a little darker and that's indicating some kinds of damage. Again, all three of these are the same ankle. We can just look at them in different ways. I'll finish off here with one, again, kind of quiz question in here. Uh, I think it's this one I'm interested in. So this is also a brain, and it's also slicing it from top to bottom like we'd seen before. But there's something a little different about this brain, as it turns out. So again, looking the same thing, you can see the eyeballs coming in there. But I don't know if anybody's got a guess about what this brain might be special about. Well, it turns out this is a mouse brain. So we actually have a scanner, not this one you're looking at, but one that's a lot smaller. The opening of that scanner is maybe about this big and we can put mice in it. So we end up with small scanner so we can scan small things. This mouse is actually just asleep. It's under anesthesia. So we just put it to sleep. It's breathing that to stay asleep and we can scan it in there for half an hour or even an hour and we can look at these mouse brains. And it's the same kind of thing. There's a lot, a lot of research that, you know, we want to look at the brains or the behavior of mice. And so we can put them in our MRI scanner downstairs and look at exactly how their brain is changing. And it's the same idea. We can do things over time. So we, we've scanned mice as young as one day old or on the, all the way up to a year old. And we can bring them back and kind of see how does their brain develop over time. If they have some, you know, condition, some abnormality, we can also follow that up and see how is it different from the brains that are normal. So we actually do quite a few uh, mice as well. I've gotten really good at you know, catching them in their little cage without getting bit. So uh, it's, a, it's a skill you really have to learn in that. So it looks like I'm out of time. Uh, go in the chat there. There is a little survey that they'd like you to take just to see how your experience was today. And so thanks for coming in. And uh, hopefully someday in the future, we'll be able to bring you in in person and you can see the magic belt and the magic blocks coming through there. So thanks very much for coming and have a good day.